Someone is asking Sayyidi, Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi, I consistently meditate for about two minutes but find it difficult to increase. How can we overcome the resistance and meditate longer? Wa alaikum salam. InshaAllah, the two, two minutes is the time for you just to sit down, inshaAllah. But uh, try to do late night when uh, you know at tahajjud and right before fajr or in the middle of fajr and just sitting and put some salawats on and, and just connect your heart, visualize yourself at Rosa Sharif in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and just making your salawats in his presence and that he dress you and lights to bless you. So you, you put yourself in, in, in scenarios and in places that are holy and, and spend the time. Make the time and the effort when things are not busy. If you're trying to do it in the middle of the day before an email, yeah no, nobody can do that. And that's why Allah doesn't recommend Qiyam al-Layl and the concept of waking up at night has a tremendous importance in Islam and that's, that was the reality of Taraweeh, Salat, salat al-Taraweeh. All our lives is Taraweeh, Taraweeh is Qiyam al-Layl, it used to be called Salat al-Qiyam al-Layl that it would gather everybody together, let's pray and read Qur'an. So this was the, the, the way of the khawas that every night they're praying all the time, every night they stay vigilant, they try to do their most and the most amount of worshipness. Ramadan was for the whole nation to stop their dunya desires, get together and pray your your 20 rakahs and then they went, they went to 8 rakah, 12 rakah and just so that they would be together and they would spend some time in their vigilance for Allah and their tafakkur and their contemplation. That's what we said. So Ramadan practices was for the nation to do what the khawas are doing all the time. Allah's elite, Allah's sincere servants, Allah's zikr servants that are all following the awrads of shaykhs. They have to do this every night, they have to pray uh, their tahajjud, they have to get up, they have to do their wazifas, their awrads, their zikrs to the best of their ability. So alhamdulillah this is, this is the way that Allah wants it and this is the way Allah give the reward for it and the immense blessings of it inshaAllah. Uh, As alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can you please explain the importance of Surat al-Kahf? Surat al Yeah. No, we just did that, but I can't give a tafsir on, 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 the, on the internet. <laughs> but Surat al Kaf, and we have a whole section on, on following those whom Allah has guided. And the tariqahs are based on the dialogue between Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr. And that to remember that Sayyidina Khidr is an unseen Prophet of Allah. And that was one of the secrets of Surat Al-Kahf and Abi Musa salam. we have a whole section on that. Look under the, the 18th, uh, the reality of 18 and the reality of the second lunar month and, and all those realities that has to do with the immense importance of, uh, of character. I think we even this year we tied it into to social stigma. The why Nabi Musa was so sort of uh, in a difficulty when dealing with Sayyidina Khidr is because nobody could see him. So whatever testing he was going through it looked like he was doing it. So his people are going to think, what kind of Prophet is this that you're now destroying this man's boat? If you could see Sayyidina Khidr why would you be concerned? Because you'd be sitting there and it looked like some guy is smashing a boat and your people would be looking at you and say, I don't know there's <laughs> something's wrong with this man he's doing this. But because he couldn't be seen it looked like you were smashing the boat. So then your people would bother you more, more social stigma and social pressure of what the people think. So this, this last year had a lot more of the realities of Surat al-Kahf inshaAllah and the immensity and the blessings of how to follow tariqah and the manners and the adab within that surah. And to follow the, the guides whom have been given a rahmah and then taught by Allah which is exact opposite of the people today that go and they try to learn their fiqr and then guide people.
which doesn't work because they go and learn their usul, they become very hard and they fight everyone. But Allah's servants and Allah says, this is one of my servants and Sayyidina Khidr is in our shajara. So he's sending his support to all of the shaykhs of Naqshbandiya. And the reality of that is one whom they attain the rahmah, they attain their love and proximity to Sayyidina Muhammad So then no doubt he's been taught. He's been taught by one who shadeed al-quwwah, one whom has immense power is teaching. Means the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As alaikum Sayyidi, uh, any, specific, any specific spiritual practices for the safety and protection of newborns? <coughs> we have the, the du'as on the website, we have the taweezes to put into the house, the the food and the cleanliness of the food important for the child and then the actions of the parents because the child is a sponge and relying upon the actions of the household. So it means that if we're conscious of the child's ability to sense energy then everything we do in life is to make their journey to be easier. So it means that I put the taweezes in the house for the energy of the child to be good. Taweez upon myself and upon the child for their energy to be good and to be protected. When I enter into the home same understanding, I try to quickly make my wudu, quickly wash myself so that any negativity is not roaming inside the house and then I don't approach the child without my state of wudu and out my state of cleanliness because whatever energy I have the child will carry it and we have talks on. The, the one who has the most light is the one whom's carrying the burdens in your life, right? So it means the one who has the most light and if three people come in with negative energies, those negative energies will go to that one who has the most light. This is just the law of energy, the positive charge will collect all the negative charge, that's why then in the associations we keep the association of positive people. So when we turn on the zikr, the shaykh has the more positive, the zikr has the more positive, they're able to bring an energy into your home and pull out all the negativity. Then you, this is a, a part of the rahmah the shaykh Nazim would talk about that those whom distance themselves from awliya, they distance themselves from Allah's rahmah, meaning what? These are all these immense blessings. As soon as you turn the zikr on, the energy comes in and pulls every negativity away. This so I don't like these people, the shaitan whisper into your ear, you turn the zikr off. Now what happens in, in your home? You're not doing zikr, who has the positive energy? And then that's why then we have in the article, the children begin to carry the burden because they're mazloom, they're young still. So when the person comes from work angry, the other one comes from work, comes from the mall, comes from shopping, the, the, this energy comes into the home, where does it go? Then they start kissing the child and they start touching and all the energy going on to the child because the child is like the awliya of the house. He just came from paradise, what has he done wrong? So he has like a walaya, the sainthood and he carries everything and that's why children become sick. They carry the burdens of what's happening in homes and that's the importance of the tariqah, the practices and everything. So the tariqah comes to establish then this, this is an energy battle, put a taweez in your home, put taweezes on the children that so when you come into the house make sure that you make your wudu, your energy practice are understood, don't touch him, don't kiss him on his lips, don't do anything to convey energy to that child like that and when you do have wudu. Then you can kiss their hands and, and feet but don't put from your mouth to the mouth of the child, it will carry the burdens directly and don't let relative come to kiss their mouths and these things are, are not uh, accepted and they have a horrific energy conveyance onto these children, they're like sponges and they carry the burdens of what's happening in the home. That's why then the teaching was turn the zikr on, as soon as you turn the zikr on at least once a week 
immense cleansing will begin to happen within the home. If you can do it then you're, you're free to do that in your home, you do it on a daily basis. Turn the zikr, we have the looping zikrs and you play that in the home and cleans the energy, cleans the environment. And that's when people are emailing that, oh my kid as soon as I put this video, this little child is like staring and smiling at the roof and ceilings and, and the mobiles because this energy is so positive they feel the safety of that positive energy and that it repels all the negative energies that are always around us in life coming and, and trying to sort of uh, contaminate our environment. But uh, very important inshaAllah. Sayyidi a clarification on how to do meditation, uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi, during connection uh, we visualize with the breath sprinkles of light particles coming towards our heart and cleansing, at the same time I let go of my heart so you can dress it, is that correct? See particles of light coming and blessing and then what? Um, and at the same time I let go of my heart so you can dress it. Let go of my heart so you can dress it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's exactly how they exp as express it but nafasa rahmah that yeah don't make this about anyone personal, this is about Allah because there's no you know, they're, they're doing something spooky and then people listen, no oh, what is he talking about? But when we sit to meditate that the understanding of the meditation is, I want to connect with nafas rahmah these are all Islamically accepted understandings. So as soon as you're meditating you're asking Ya Rabbi that from the, the breath of rahmah and mercy to dress me from that breath and that I'm sitting and I want to purge all the negativity with my breath out and I want to breathe in all the positive lights. So that's a meditation for breathing. So that's why all these tafakkurs are different. So if you're going to sit and meditate on how to breathe, you're going to play your salawats, you're going to visualize that from six directions Allah to dress you from nafasa rahmah and light. And this light when you breathe in is coming in light and that all my bad character with my breath is coming out and then I'm breathing out. And then breathing in positive light and breathing out all my badness and all my bad character. That's different than in the Rabita and making the connection. So when I want to sit and make my connection with the shaykh that's from Atiullah Ati Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum wa Taqullah wa Kunu Ma Sadaqeen that Allah says, have a consciousness and keep the company of my sadaq and my truthful servants and say, Ya Rabbi that grant me the ability to keep that connection. And I'm sitting and visualize my shaykh is right in front of me and then I'm asking myself to be nothing, to be nothing and Sayyidi dress me from the light that reflects from Allah off your heart, that light of reflection let it to reflect into my heart. I have the, the ability to get that light but like a satellite let it to reflect onto my heart from that light and I visualize and I begin to teach myself how to make the connection with my shaykh in front of me. And then visualize Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani, Naqib al Ummah, Waiz al Ummah, or Mawlana Sultan al Awliya, Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani. These are the strongest and easiest. If you want to visualize Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Adil, alhamdulillah. But the strongest and easiest for people is the Shaykh Dagestani and Mawlana Shaykh Sultan Awliya Ma'an Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani and Sultan Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, inshaAllah. <coughs> InshaAllah ila shaykh al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatana shbandiyyatul aliyya wa sayyidah wa saddatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha.